how's it going guys my name is Yannis Strokos and welcome back to my channel now today we are heading to Motorcycle Live now I actually live about two miles down the road and there's my bus coming so I best hurry up uh, so I think I'm just gonna do a vlog style video maybe a few montages in there and uh, yeah so smash that like button guys I uh, hope you enjoy the video it does mean a lot and I'm gonna get on this bus and get going About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action, what we can be. Life with no distractions, we'll get away. This is what we waited for. We're here on the uh, Yamaha stand with uh, Jeff Turner, uh, the uh, marketing manager for Yamaha UK. So Jeff, how's the show going? So far, fantastic. Uh, second day today and uh, we had a bumper day yesterday. Lots of people, lots of interest in the bikes, uh, lots of test rides. Yeah, really, really good start. So um, in terms of uh, Yamaha in, in 2019, what's the real sort of showpiece for you guys? Well, we've come here with eight new models and we've come here with a concept bike, which is a little uh, insight into the future. And really it's about the first time the public have got to see the new 2019 colors, see the new models in the flesh. A lot of these bikes are straight from Milan. They literally come off the stand, get into a truck and come here to Motorcycle Live. Okay, so in, when you said uh, the show uh, showpiece, uh, pr uh, not production bike, you said, uh, the future bike. Uh, what is that? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, we unveiled a bike at Milan called the 3CT, and it's a 300cc leaning multi-wheel scooter uh, with a wide track and an auto tilt lock uh, uh, system so that you don't have to put your feet down. And it's really a way of helping people who live in the cities uh, look at future urban transport. Okay. And is that sort of playing on the whole uh, Nikon philosophy or is that just a whole new sort of ball game? Yeah, the Nikon, uh, we've kind of had leaning multi-wheel technology for a little bit as a concept. And the Nikon came along as our second production uh, vehicle, the, the Tricity 125 being the first one. And uh, we just started delivering Nikons into the UK market in the last month or two. And it's just unbelievable to ride the, the the grip you get from the system. Yeah, definitely. And I've uh, I've ridden one, and it's it feels really strange to begin with, but once you start going, it feels really intu intuitive to uh, to ride. Um, obviously, with my background with the MT-07, uh, is there any upgrades on the MT-07 apart from the new color range? Yeah, the MTs this year is all about colors. We uh, we've we've dropped the night fluo, which was the kind of edgy fluorescent green and dark gray. And the new color is called Ice Fluo. And uh, it's, a, it's a kind of uh, satin gray with a, an orangey red contrast and wheels and so forth. It looks really clean, really modern, really sharp. Yeah, I mean, when I first saw the pictures, I thought it looks, looked very, very orange. And I think I even wrote that it looked very orange in some of the articles. However, having seen it in the flesh, it is more towards the sort of red side, isn't it? More, uh, more than or orange. It is, it's funny because uh, I think it's one of those pit, uh, those colors that's quite hard to print. Yeah, And, I agree. and it, it either looks very red or very orange, but sometimes, you know, when you actually see it in the flesh, it's got this kind of flame red to it, which is really nice. Yeah, and then uh, the only other thing that really caught my eye on the stand was uh, the GYTR uh, uh, bike. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and how that came, uh, came about? 
Yeah, that one's a bit special. So Yamaha are going to make that as an official tribute. Uh, it's a kind of way of rounding up the 20th anniversary year of the R1, um, which we started here exactly a year ago. And this bike will be made in a limited edition, one for every year of the R1, so 20 units only. Uh, it's super trick, it's got factory tank, seat fairing units, it's got a race loom, ECU. It's a track only bike, uh, they'll each be inscribed with a number and uh, delivered to customers. And it will be first come first served, available online in December. Okay, wicked, yeah. And is that more aimed towards racing or people with track, uh, they'll just want to do track days or a bit of, bo a bit of both? Yeah, it's a track day bike really. Uh, it hasn't got a full race spec engine in it, although you could take it to the next level if you wanted. But we see it being bought by track day riders and collectors. Uh, and I think with 20, they're just going to be snipped up immediately. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Jeff, uh, for uh, giving me some uh, time and have a chat with you. And uh, hope you have a good sh uh, rest of the show. Fantastic. Cheers. Thanks for coming to the Yamaha stand. Yeah, thank you. Now looking back. Eyes on the freeway, Bonnie and Clyde A classic cliche, we're on the run This is what we waited for We're here with Stuart from uh, Norton, just having a chat about uh, sort of the innovations that you've got yeah. um, lined up for yeah, uh, big, 2019. Yeah, big show for us, Janis. We've launched our new 650 platform, so we've got the, the new Atlas range, where there's a Nomad and a Ranger, which is a, a very capable off-road bike, and then the 650 Superlight, which is a, a, an all-new 650 racing twin, uh, to go in the Super Twins, but particularly to race in the lightweight TT for 2019. So, some nice new bikes, Bigger stand, more bikes, more things going on, and uh, you know Norton continues to grow. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit more about the uh, super uh, super light. Yeah. Um, what was the sort of reasoning behind it? Was it just because you wanted to get into the TT super lights? Yeah. The main reason is we want to race more categories at the TT. So obviously the lightweight is a is a is a is a very fast class, getting better and better over the years. We wanted to be part of that, and also gives us we're at the TT anyway with the big bikes. So why not race? the lightweight along with the big bikes and uh, John's well up for that so it seemed a good class for us to get into having developed the 650 for the Atlas range we've got the engine there and putting a bit more performance into the engine puts us competitive against the other bikes that are in that lightweight class but we've got to get a, a homologated 650 platform to go racing and by the time we got it homologated well actually that turns into a really nice road yeah. bike so we kind of got, got the two out of one, but the, the, the primary reason is to race that lightweight and, and this, the spin-off of that is to have a, a really cool road bike that's um, 105 horsepower, just a really cool little motorbike. And it's kind of, we, some boy came on today and said, well, it's kind of the little secret weapon. Yeah. You know, it's um, really understated, but pr pretty fast. Yeah. In terms of the chassis, is, is it ex exactly the same as the V4? No, it's a, it's a shrunk down chassis. So everything's kind of 70, 75% of the V4. The, uh, all of the bodywork, the carbon, the chassis, everything's just a little bit reduced and we get a weight saving and a smaller uh, aero area, etc. So it's more, more uh, aero efficient with having a smaller nose cone. So there's, there's little bits all about it that have changed. So there are a few synergies, but in essence, it, it's a completely okay. new bike. Yeah, and in terms of uh, num uh, numbers, because everyone always asks about numbers, yeah. uh, in terms of horsepower, what is yeah. it sort of pushing? Yeah, it's, it's 105 horsepower. Um, it'll go a little bit more when we get into race trim, but if you put that in context of where that class is at the minute, 90, 95 horsepower is a good score um, for a 650 twin. So it's punching a real good number, but it's, a, it's, it's derived from our V4 1200 platform, okay. and that's 214 horse at, at 1200, and we then take the back cylinders off the V4, and then stroke it a little bit from a 600 twin out to a 650. So we, we do just get a little bit more power and torque out of that. So it's actually a really strong engine. We use the same clutch, the same gearbox. So we're not stressing anything out because oh, okay. the, the clutch and the gearbox, we've proved out north of 200 horsepower. So some of the component levels in, in that engine are well capable of those kind of powers. Wicked, well that sounds all really interesting and I can't wait to see it around the uh, TT course with uh, John, uh, John on it. Yeah, it'd be, be a sight to see, you know, get John, John giving it the gas on, on the lightweight, be really nice and looking forward to a big TT. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you very much and I uh, hope you have a great rest of yeah. the show. Cheers, Giannis, yeah, thank you. Cheers, cheers buddy. Yeah.
I'm here with Shoei, with Martin. Uh, just uh, tell me a little bit about what makes uh, Shoei different to other brands and why someone should pick a more premium helmet over uh, something like a hundred pound to two hundred pound helmet. So Shoei's are all made by hand in the factories in Japan. Um, there's a few autonomous processes, but everything's done by hand. There's not normally more than two pr processes before something's checked. So for instance, they'll cast the mold, then they'll check it. They'll do two paint processes, then they'll check it. So there's a lot of hand uh, work going on there, um, which just means that there's a lot more labor intensive processes going on. The quality of the shell as well. Um, so there's AIM and AIM Plus. Um, they all use roughly the same shell composite so you know that they're all top quality. Um, you don't have any lower quality shells for, for the price. They're all, they're all high spec. Okay, uh, so if we go through the new model range, the 2019 model range, uh, so if you go through it and show me a few things that you've got. So, I don't know which one I could grab. <laughs> so the GT Air 2 is a, is a new model for this year. It's a, a place in the GT Air model, so we've just gone up one. Um, so new uh, visor positioning uh, model on this, so you can adjust the, the height of the visor so it won't hit your nose. Okay. Um, so slightly higher position and slightly lower position. Um, this one's also been re-engineered in the wind tunnel, so Shoei are one of the only uh, helmet manufacturers to use a wind tunnel. Um, so this one's been designed with an integral spoiler, so you get a lot more downforce okay. and it's a lot more slipstream. So uh, is that your sort of main uh, push for 2019, the GT yeah. Air 2? So all the other ones have new colors in them, um, in the range, but the GT Air 2 is the new model for, for 2019. Across to look at the, uh, the X-Spirit 3, so the uh, Hickman replica. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this helmet and what makes it so special. So this was the same or very similar livery to um, Peter Hickman's win at the Isle of Man TT this year. So um, Trooper Beer. Um, have sponsored the, the helmet and we've done the, the livery to go with it. So you get this 666 limited helmets, um, all individually numbered, and they come in a presentation box with lots of other goodies, beer mat, glass, pin badge and stuff like that. Um, they'll be available on the 26th of, uh, of November. And is there many still available or are they all sold out now? There's just enough, but don't wait too long. <laughs> right, well, thank you very much for uh, spending the time and chatting with us. Right. Uh, cheers. So I'm here with uh, Oli from Arc, which is a very innovative uh, company. Uh, just tell me a little bit more about the uh, the project. Yeah, so Arc's a new brand new brand. So we've been going since April last year. So about 18 months of development now. It's our first product, the Vector motorbike. So pretty groundbreaking in terms of technology, electric motorcycle, but it's the user interface that we're really majoring on. So that's kind of the whole package really. So. Yeah. So, in terms of an electric bike, uh, how would we compare it to a uh, conventional bike in terms of numbers, uh, horsepower, torque figures and whatnot? Yeah, the kind of key stats, right? Yeah. So, it's about 103 kilowatts, so 135 brake. Mass, we got down to about 35% lower than our competitors, so we're at 220 kilos. And that's all based around the carbon composite monocoque, carbon swing arms, carbon top panel, just really throwing all the materials and tech we can at it. In terms of range, if we quote kind of the standard simulation everyone runs, it's 270 miles, but real world, you're looking at about 200 miles or 120 on those kind of motorways. So yeah, it's pretty good, it's up there. Top speed, 125 miles an hour, that's off one gear. So okay. she could do more, but we didn't want to put a fairing on her because she looks too good without it. So yeah, no, I mean, the, uh, looks wise, it's something like I've never seen before. Um, is there a reason behind the, uh, the looks of it, the way it looks? Uh, just basically the, our design team have bought inspiration from all over like we've you know got a huge amount of respect for the motorbike industry we've benchmarked a whole heap of bikes you know but we've also just trying to pull in from all over so you know cars boats watches you name it we've probably looked into the design side of it and seen where it goes and we just kind of pull back things so we all love that kind of cafe racer scene so this is our kind of cafe racer of the future and that's okay. kind of what we're looking at yeah. so and in terms of you said innovations and things like that now i've heard that for example the helmet is the key and things like that how does that uh, really work in, in in the real life yeah so it's pretty interesting really and that's the bit we've really made on is that experience around the bike so the bike comes with a jacket so the origin jacket and the zenith helmet so the helmet itself as you say is the key 
that's just you know your kind of keyless technology using the car today. But what they're really focused is on the head-up display. What we're using here is fighter pilot technology to throw that focal point down the road, which means you're no longer having to kind of change your kind of focus points. So you're not looking down at your clocks or on the inside of your eyes. You can just keep your eyes where the hazards are and just enjoy that moment. So all your display will be in your periphery and around you, making it a kind of a safer ride, really. Yeah. Well, it all sounds really interesting and I cannot wait to try one out. So, in terms of availability, when are you sort of looking at launching it to the uh, general public? So, we started taking deposits from a couple of weeks ago when we launched in Milan. So, we've had a huge amount of interest from all over the world, you know, stateside, Scandinavia, Australia, you name it, we've probably had an inquiry from there. So, they're going fast, but customers were taking delivery in March 2020. So. We're now at that point, we're doing sign-off testing, homologation, work through all that. So homologation for EU, UK and US. Once we've done that, customers will take their delivery of their bike. Right, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to have a chat with me. Anytime. And uh, cheers. Thank you. Great. Thanks. That was good. Aaron from Knox. Um, so Aaron, tell us about um, what's been popular this uh, year in terms of clothing and where do you see the trends going? Well, do you know, one of the pop, uh, super, super popular products this year has been the Zephyr jacket, um, which is our summer riding jacket. Obviously, we've had an absolutely phenomenal summer. Yeah. I think everybody up and down the UK has had just an amazing summer. Um, so there's been like literally so many people buying the, the, this product for hot weather riding. Also, a phenomenal amount of people doing touring uh, in in Europe. I think I don't know whether that's on the up, but it certainly feels like it. Um, you know, people are telling us that they're doing touring in in a hot climate, and they need a they need clothing to match with that. So our Zephyr armored shirts have been uh, phenomenally popular. And actually, to be honest, we've been inundated even the first couple of days of the show with people who bought them last year and have said, "Yeah, I'm really glad I bought that because yeah. it because it, it made the holiday much more comfortable." Exactly. I mean, I ride with a Zephyr myself. Uh, yeah and it was just a godsend this summer. So do you sort of see that sort of trend going on to next year as well? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I think you know, customers are wanting more comfort, they're wanting more flexibility, they're wanting better breathability. Um, and yeah, actually there's a new CE standards coming in as well. So, um, you know, it'd be quite interesting to see how a motorcycle clothing kind of reacts to that. We've got our own. Uh, innovations that are due out uh, over the next couple of months that are really going to solve some of those issues as well. So we're quite excited to see how the market uh, really reacts to those products. Tell me a little bit about the uh, ARC project because uh, I've been over and speaking to them guys there and yeah. obviously you've been uh, heavily involved with in terms of the uh, cl connected clothing for that. So yeah. if you tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so that's a really exciting um, collaboration project we've been working on over the past two and a bit years actually. Um, so when we first started talking uh, about the ARC project, it was a Jaguar product and then this new company was really formed out of, the, out of, out of Jaguar and taking some of the, um, some of the top people out of their uh, white space, uh, which is obviously Mark Truman. It's a really exciting new product and we're doing some amazing innovations that have never been seen before. Haptic technology uh, in, in the clothing connected to the bike. I think one of the things that you know, electric bikes are coming. There's no, there's yeah. no two ways about it. And I think, you know, we're going to see more and more electric bikes. But obviously, with an electric bike, there's less feedback. You, you know, you ride them. Yeah. There's not the engine braking that you used to. There's not the vibrations that you used to. And um, you know, this innovation has been about connecting the rider in a in a haptic sense. You get vibrations when someone's in your blind spot. Uh, there's also a performance mode as well, so it's connected to the bike in terms of giving you feedback You know when you're on the edge of the limits of the bike. Yes, it's really, really clever stuff. So we've been super proud to be a part of that um, uh, development, basically. Yeah, definitely, I bet. Well, cheers, Aaron, for having uh, the time to chat with us, and I look forward to seeing what you've got in 2019. You're the man. Cheers, yeah. Dennis. Cheers. <laughs> that is absolutely it from me from motorcycle live i've just got home i am absolutely knackered my voice is going 
but I hope you really enjoyed that guys um, please smash that like button it is something that I really really appreciate uh, go follow Nathan up here he helped me uh, with videos and stuff uh, absolutely top bloke and uh, cheers for all the companies that helped me today so thanks guys and I shall see you in the next video